Jacksonville Jaguars absolutely crushed the later rounds in the 2014 NFL Draft. You got second team All-Pro 2017 Pro Bowler Telvin Smith in the fifth round. Fringe Pro Bowl talent guard slash center Brandon Linder in the third round. Their second second round pick, they got Pro Bowler Allen Robinson out of Penn State, who in 2015 with the Jags went off for 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. Sounds like a pretty sick draft, right? But the first two picks in that draft, their first first round pick and their first second round pick they got Marquise Lee talented wide receiver coming out of USC was never really able to put it together in the NFL or get beyond a wide receiver three level and they decided to swing for the fences with Blake Bortles the boat out of central Florida to become their new franchise quarterback and when all was said and done for Blake Bortles in Jacksonville he was he had a, a good year or two, good year and a half but ultimately will go down as a bust so what I'm thinking is what if Maybe the Jacksonville Jaguars had their head scout attend a few more Fresno State games. And in this year's draft, they properly identified Derek Carr as the top quarterback of the bunch and decided to go with Derek Carr over Blake Bortles. And with that first second round pick, as they retool, revitalize the offense, they go with his Fresno State teammate, Mr. Devontae Adams. In real life, they are now together with the old Vegas Raiders. Almost said it. Almost said it, but I didn't say it. They're together with the Vegas Raiders, and a lot of people are expecting them to absolutely light the league up. But what if back in 2014, the Jacksonville Jaguars had those same studs? They picked up fifth round, third round, second round, and you replaced Marquise Lee and Blake Bortles with Devontae Adams and Mr. Derek Carr. What would that look like? Where would the Jags be today? Let's find out. Here is our draft class. Derek Carr, Allen Robinson, Devontae Adams, Brandon Linder, and Telvin Smith. What can this core of players going forward over the next five seasons achieve with the Jacksonville Jaguars? Let's find out. Quickly take a look at our team as we gear up for year one of this five-year rebuild in this hypothetical what-if dream scenario for the Jacksonville Jaguars so we have Derek Carr at quarterback, Justin Forsett at running back, Justin Blackman still at an 83 overall rating in Madden 15. We got Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, Cecil Short. So we're really four deep at wide receiver, as well as a very talented tight end in Mercedes Lewis. Offensive line, a lot of familiar names if you are a Jags fan. We got Brandon Leonard will start at center. And Luke Jokel, much like Justin Blackman, even though they're regarded now as draft busts, they were still pulling in pretty high ratings in Madden 15. So we have that going for us. A little bit of a career redemption for those players. On the defensive side of the ball, we are going with Telvin Smith as a starter with Paul Plitzlesny at linebacker. We have Jonathan Cyprian with a dev trade. Dwight Lowry, 81. Rest of the team, though, it's looking a little rough. And Derek Marks with an 80. Tyson Alulu, 80 star dev. Couple pieces there on the defensive line. But ultimately, just still plenty of work to go forward on this rebuild, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But at least in our first draft, a lot of reinforcements have come on the offensive side. Let's see what we can do early on in these guys' careers here in year one of this five-year what-if redraft rebuild. First free agent period, going to go kind of light. We're going to let Cecil Shorts walk. I probably should have tried to trade him. Uh, because he's going to be wide receiver four on our team. But we'll just let him go off into free agency. His value wouldn't be too, too crazy. Got to move on for some of these veterans. I'm going to bring back Austin Badzor, 76, 23-year-old right tackle. Still has a high ceiling. Same goes for Will Rackley at left guard. End of year one, team success was brutal. Full disclosure, here is what we're running for offensive schemes. Obviously, Urban Myers, of course. I didn't really care about making it 100% accurate this time. But we're going West Coast Power Run and the Vegas Raiders offense, right? Seems good. And the Jags this time ran a 4-3, so I'm just going 4-3, and I went with my favorite 4-3 playbook, the most familiar 4-3 playbook, tend to get decent results with the Philadelphia Eagles. That being said, we were very poor as a team in terms of record, 4-13. Yet, Derek Carr, 5,000 yards, 43 touchdowns. Yet, Devontae Adams as a rookie, 102 receptions, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns the production is beyond my dreams Derek Carr was second in yards first in touchdowns at like they just literally kept the air raid going from Fresno like I thought like I remember actually if I if you load this up and use base Jags their air raid spread offense I was like yeah it doesn't really fit what we're doing let's go with what we're gonna see in real life which is the Raiders with Derek Carr Devontae Adams and it absolutely dominated you got a thousand yards six touchdowns Justin Blackman just shy of a thousand for Mercedes Lewis uh, there's only so many mouths to feed, but Allen Robinson still has a third option there. Pretty goddamn dominant. Defensively, Paul Pazlesny, a bunch of tackles. 
We had uh, 14 sacks, Dino Hayes, three picks from Paul Puzlesi. Telvin Smith, 124 tackles. And the dev traits are insane. I think literally every one of these rookies that we got outside of Linder, because dev traits don't happen for offensive linemen, even though they're coming in Madden 23. And Telvin, and uh, sorry, uh, Allen Robinson. They're the only guys that did not go up a dev trait. Derek Carr was a star dev, and he went up to... Quarterback of the year, superstar def. Offensive rookie of the year, superstar def. Devontae Adams was a superstar, which is completely fair. That's what he should be. And because of his dominant season as wide receiver of the year, he went up to a superstar X factor. And on the defensive side of the ball, Telvin Smith was a star. He went up to a superstar after getting, I must have got defensive rookie of the year, or just straight up got it because he was an absolute beast. So all things considered, I do actually want to check and see. Did Derek, who got the MVP? Because Derek Carr, statistically speaking, not too far off the pace, I would assume, an NFL MVP. We have still the 16th ranked offense. Derek Carr coming in third place for the MVP. He is the Offensive Player of the Year. Derek Carr, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Devontae Adams, second place. Allen Robinson, third place. And our dude, Telvin Smith, fifth place for the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we have Wide Receiver, Quarterback of the Year as well. This rebuild could not have got started any better number two pick in the draft i don't like any of the available options so i'm actually going to trade out of it with the atlanta falcons who are giving us two first round picks to move out of this spot easy deal there's two players that i was targeting anyways if we stayed at pick two one was just going all in on offense and grabbing todd Gurley. the second option was going into the secondary market and bringing in marcus peters the ball hawk he's actually off the board and i really do think we need to you know address the defense but at this point in time we can just let's just continue to be overpowering and we'll select Todd Gurley. After we kept winning this draft, knowing that we had to get better on defense, that's what we tried our best to do. We got Todd Gurley, 72 hidden dev. Second round, I got Eric Kendrick, 69 with a hidden dev. Him, Paul Pazlesny, Telvin Smith. That is a pretty damn good linebacker, even though Pazlesny is regressing. I got PJ Williams in the third round, normal dev corner. Fourth round, we got Zadarius Smith. Getting some pass rush help. Had to pull the trigger. There was no bad options. Darius Smith was on the board. Grady Jarrett was on the board. And I was like, you know what? We got to get at least one of these guys at defense. We got Bobby Hart, uh, a couple guys there just to finish. I, I went Anthony Harris in the seventh round. I was like, maybe he'll have a dev. If not, you know, not cheesy pick by any means. So uh, we're getting out of this with three hidden dev players. And we picked up an additional first round pick for next year's draft. We threw a little bit of money around in free agents here, keeping veterans around Mercedes Lewis, Josh Scobie, uh, and send Derek Marks also with anger. Anytime you get a dev trade punter, you want to keep him around. And so, you know, continuing the career redemption arc of one of the most dominant college wide receivers I've ever seen, Justin Blackman, and rewarding him with a four-year deal. At the end of year two, I shit you not, we go on a Super Bowl run. We were the two seed. We beat the Broncos 28-7. We beat the Bengals 26-24. We beat the Cheat Code Chiefs 31-21 to set up a Super Bowl matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, because of the nature of the retro mod, anytime that we play the moment, sit front row in a Super Bowl, it incre you know significantly increases the chance that it's going to crash. So we're just going to straight up sim this Super Bowl. But I want to take a look here again at a dominant season. Devontae Adams was second in terms of receiving. Uh, Derek Carr, 4,900 yards, 37 touchdowns. He has also gone from a superstar up to a superstar X-Factor, which is sensational. Uh, with the volume that we have in terms of passing Todd Gurley, there's only so much room that he had to work. 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns. Devontae Adams, 11-8. and eight. Justin Blackman, 9-12. and 12 for Allen Robinson and on the defensive side of the ball we got 18 and a half sacks from Alu Alu six sacks 12 TFLs from Zadarius Smith who came out as a star dev and on the back end not a lot of interceptions which is why I'm pretty pumped that we have two first round picks for the upcoming draft because there was a certain corner that the Jags drafted that is pretty damn good that we're going to try to trade up for and his name is Jalen Ramsey. Before we can even focus on that, let's focus on this Super Bowl and see if we can start the beginning of a dynasty here in Jacksonville. Keep it here live, man. Let's get the live reaction. Can we win this Super Bowl? Are we going to fall? Damn it. 35-31. The Seahawks beat the Jaguars. Russell Wilson is your MVP. And... You know what? I also say full kudos, Justin Houston, straight up winning the NFL MVP. But we'll be back. We'll be back. Holy shit.
From the laws of Madden, I probably could have got this trade done with just both our first round picks, but I sent two first and a second to move all the way up to pick two to ensure that we can bring in a certain corner. Had to make it happen. Plus, we desperately need a lockdown outside corner, so welcome back to Jacksonville, Jalen Ramsey. Not saying I'm trying to make the cheesy picks, but we top need on our team right now in turn of biggest hole, phrasing, is free safety. It's just written in the stars that I got to make this pick. You know, not every draft's going to be cheesy, even though the first two have kind of set themselves up that way. Welcome to Jacksonville. And at least in these draft classes, even though the dev traits are cheesy, their base ratings, they usually start like in the low 60s. So it is a grind to get them to live up to the expectation and potential that we know some of these players have in real life. And for a draft recap, not too much outside. Jalen Ramsey comes in, 83 hidden devs, 67 hidden devs, Justin Simmons. Fourth round, I get Ted Karras at guard. He's 74 base. That's a terrific starting spot. 66, Seth, Deval, Vaughn, Houston Carson, and Nate Sudfeld. But it's all about the DBs here in this draft. And to quickly showcase the roster here as we gear up for year three, Derek Carr is up to an 84 X-Factor, Todd Gurley, 81 superstar, Devontae Adams, 89 X-Factor, Justin Blackman, 84 star, Allen Robinson, 81 star, O-line still pretty nice, Linder's 83, we have Luke Jokel up to a 90, looking on the defensive side of the ball, very excited to see what the dev trait is for Jalen Ramsey, we have Justin Simmons as a starter, Kendricks, Paul Luzny, and Telvin Smith making the linebacking court. Jonathan Cyprian up to a superstar dev. Alualu up to an X-Factor after his 18 and a half sacks. Which, let's be honest, no one's talking about that. We're all just thinking about how in the hell did Justin Houston get 37 sacks with the Kansas City Chiefs. Zadarius Smith, a star dev pass rusher. Ceiling is high for him. And I'm definitely expecting this team to go on a deep playoff run here in year three. Been very, very quiet in free agency, so we have just a ridiculous amount of money to deal with extensions. I got Jokel on a five-year, Alualu on a two-year, Cyprian on a five-year. Plus, wants a little bit more. I think the regression is going to make it kind of a tipping point that I think we look somewhere else. And I got Dwayne Gratz on a three-year, 26, star dev, 80 overall corner. Year three ends with a 10 and 7 record in the FC South. Unfortunately, we crash in the AFC uh, championship game. 27-24 to the Kansas City Chiefs, so unable to make it back to the Super Bowl. However, statistically, our team, I mean, they're still playing at a pretty high level. Top five in touchdowns for Derek Carr with 32. 1,018 for Todd Gurley. 1,000 yards for Devontae Adams. 13 touchdowns. Mercedes Lewis, he's kind of forcing himself in this rebuild. Eric Hendricks, 141 tackles. 13 and a half sacks of Darius Smith. Four picks for the rookie superstar X-Factor, Jalen Ramsey. So still plenty of... Things to be optimistic about as we go into year four. The agency generally has been absolutely terrible. And even though Mercedes Lewis had a lot of touchdowns, the regression is starting to get real. So why not bring a player that has kind of throughout the years been a part of this Jags rebuild, uh, obviously at a later point in his career. But Tyler Eifert's there, 26 superstar tight end. Why not? Take a look at our draft recap. Had great ratings, but dev traits weren't really there. 68 normal Ogunjobi, 78 normal Awujie. Then I came back at a, right now, the current corner one for the Jags in real life. I got Shaquille Griffin, 72, with the hidden dev. That was it. Asiata, 72. Matt Milano, I thought, would have a hidden dev. We need a new starting middle linebacker. He's only a 70. Uh, so, you know, still a decent draft class. The last extension period is from our very first draft class. We pick up the fifth year option on Derek Carr and obviously long term extensions for Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, Brandon Linder, and Telvin Smith. And then in year four, we win the AFC South with a 10 7 record. We crash out in the AFC Championship game 44 41 against Justin Houston and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, wasn't a great performance out of Derek Carr. I mean, we still got one more year. Kind of annoying. We're, we're in that always a bridesmaid, never a bride type thing. We've gone to the AFC Championship and crashed out twice. We went to the Super Bowl, lost that. Derek Carr still playing at a very high level. 37 touchdowns, 4,600 yards. 22 touchdowns for Todd Gurley on 1,300 yards. 11 and 10 for Justin Blackman. 11 and 8 for Devontae Adams. Uh, big addition Eifert was and Allen Robinson almost 10 touchdowns. Defensively, Eric Kendricks, a lot of tackles. We had 10 and a half sacks, Alou Alou. Four picks, Jalen Ramsey. But unfortunately, as we look through the yearly awards ban, uh, top five there for Derek Carr in the MVP race. It's all going to come down to a year five Super Bowl or bust type scenario.
We're going all in in this free agency period. I signed Jadavion Clowney. That's going to allow us to kick Tyson Olulu into the D-tackle spot. We got Greg the Leg, a.k.a. Legatron, at kicker, and Bradley Roby to come in and be our corner three. For our final draft, we just needed really a linebacker, middle linebacker, and a D-tackle. And that's kind of where I went with our first two picks. I drafted Jarius Leonard, the Maniac. Uh, this is the draft class that the ratings are kind of skewed, so he will go up and change a little bit, but nothing too, too crazy. And he's hidden death, so he's going to start him in a linebacker. We got BJ Hill in the second round. And then I just kind of send out computer hooked us up with the Tehan Hand, Josh Sweat. I mean, not a bad class, but I mean, these guys here are mostly depth guys outside of Darius Leonard. Finally, you're the rebuild. Here is where the team is at. X-Factor Derek Carey, X-Factor Todd Gurley, X-Factor Devontae Adams, Blackman, and Allen Robinson, along with Tyler Eifert. Make S-tier pass catchers. O-line, 87, 82, 90, 85, and 95. Luke Jokel is the best of the bunch. Defensively, we brought in a hired mercenary here in Jadavion Clowney, 92 X-Factor at pass rusher. Ogunjobi, Alu-Alu kicking inside, and Zadarius Smith. Eric Kendricks, Darius Leonard with the superstar as our rookie middle linebacker, and Telvin Smith, that front seven S-tier, even with a little bit of a weak link at D-tackle. Uh, Cyprian and Justin Simmons at safety. Jalen Ramsey, X-Factor. Dwayne Gratz, Bradley Roby, we got, we got just depth on depth at corner and a superstar lockdown guy, fully expect. We have everything to win a Super Bowl at the final buzzer here in year five. Get it live to year five, 15 and two, our do it all, spend all of our salary cap, Jacksonville Jaguars squad is kind of popping off. We'll see if we win this game. If not, we'll just do a nice little reflection back on everyone's career. And uh, the what if, and we at least get an opportunity to close this video out, go into the Super Bowl, and take on the Washington Commanders. But I mean, I get, we just, we paid, um, I'm not going to say we paid for the Super Bowl. I'm not going to act like, oh my God, look how good the team is. We, we took some liberties during the draft. I tried to add some star talent when we could because I wanted this to be successful. We had the number one offense, and it looks like everybody is playing their best football here in year five. 39 touchdowns to nine picks for Derek Carr, 20 touchdowns on 1,600 yards carrying Todd Gurley. 2,000-yard receivers in Devontae Adams and Justin Blackman. Eifert and Robinson, good. Robinson, double-digit touchdowns. And then you got defensively, Eric Kendricks was a machine this year. We had five picks, Jalen Ramsey, 12 sacks for the mercenary. Jadavion Clowney helping out our pass rush. This team was just absolutely sick. A very quick look at the yearly awards. Just see we had an MVP. We did not. Derek Carr coming in at number seven. But that is totally fine because everything is just setting itself up. We just need a Super Bowl victory. So one last quick, quick look at where our team is at ahead of the Super Bowl. Because if we win the Super Bowl, we lose the Super Bowl. That is going to be it. Derek Carr, everybody is just absolutely balling out. No dev traits gain on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, we had, uh, I don't think, any dev traits as well, which is fine. The team is absolutely stacked. And a very quick look at the career stats of if the Jacksonville Jaguars actually never squandered all of those great high draft picks and actually made it you know count a little bit. Derek Carr, 23,000 passing yards, almost 200 touchdowns. We have 70. Todd Gurley is going to absolutely shatter the touchdown record if we continue to save another 10 seasons. 6K for Justin Blackman, 6K for Devontae Adams, 47 touchdowns, 4,300 yards, 45 touchdowns for Allen Robinson. Uh, we have on the defensive side... Obviously, those tackles are going to be massively inflated for Cyprian because that's what happens with some of these rosters. Um, Zedari Smith, 32 and a half sacks. We had 25 picks for Cyprian, 13 from Jalen Ramsey. All pretty good numbers, but we still are missing that Super Bowl, which we are going to try to achieve here against the 12 and 5 Washington Commanders. Come on, let's go, fellas. Everything has set itself up for this super team to go on and bring a Super Bowl. To Jackson, we open up first drive with a touchdown. Washington equalizes, I think, in a matchup. I, I just don't see any area of the Commanders are a better team than our Jags super team here. We can run the ball with the best of them. We can throw the ball with the best of them. We can cover with Jalen Rains. We can pass rush with Jadavian Clowney. Our linebackers, all three, are freaks of nature to control the middle of the field. And here we are, 24-24 ball game midway through the third quarter. Uh, we miss a field goal there. They get the touchdown to go up 31-24. We tied up at 31. There is a little bit of doubt that comes into the Madden Sim where it's like, if you, you know, it always feels like the Sim wants to punish you when you have this juggernaut super team. And that is unfortunately what is looking like it's happening here today. Our super team loses to just probably an okay team here in uh, the, the Commanders. I think they're led by RG3. Goddamn. I mean, really, just kudos to them, man. They stopped our super team. 
at the end of the day. But boy, oh boy, was it fun building this Jaguars team up. And I think quite, at least the enjoyment doesn't come from the Super Bowl. The enjoyment comes from how good this team was in this redraft rebuild. And what could have been the dreamland, the fantasy world team here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. My subscribers, since I've been doing redraft rebuilds and retro rebuilds, have literally, I'm not even going to exaggerate, went up like almost 200%. My views are up considerably so i very much appreciate it i love that you guys are digging this series so subscribe if you're first time stopping by leave a comment in the comment section below not only for the youtube algorithm throw a like that way though it helps a lot but what scenario you want to see next in the redraft rebuild and someone also suggested i looked through all the comments maybe trades what if trades if you have any famous trades that your team almost made but never pulled the trigger on feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below as i try to accumulate a little bit of a list for that but that'll do it for me today guys thank you very much for watching love ya and peace out.